Occasionally on Twitter, you come across people who have eaten one too many bars of soap. Like on this occasion, when I saw people tweeting about various anime needing to replace Bleach within the big three. I know that these posts are a poor attempt at baiting people for a reaction, but they are leading to people who don't know any better thinking that Attack on Titan can replace Bleach in the big three. It's like people think that the big three is a current ongoing phenomenon, as opposed to a historical term at this point. In addition to this, we have some people talking about the quote unquote new big three. Now, I don't have a problem with people ranking their top 3 anime, but when they try to coin the term New Big 3, it proves to me that they didn't grow up during the era of the Big 3, so they don't really know what it is. If you're one of these people and you only started watching anime after 2015, and you think that any series can be in the Big 3, and that Bleach can be replaced by another series, or Naruto can be replaced by Demon Slayer, and you believe that there is going to be a New Big 3, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to explain what the Big 3 was, and why there will never be anything like it ever again, as well as discussing why eating crayons is really dangerous to your health. So without further delay, let's dive into the topic of this video. The Big 3 consists of three manga titles that at the same time dominated not only the western sphere of the fandom, but globally as a whole. These three series that I'm referring to were of course Naruto, Bleach and One Piece. They were undoubtedly the three most popular series that were running alongside each other in the same magazine Weekly Shonen Jump. The very Shonen Jump magazine that had brought us Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Dragon Ball and Yu Yu Hakusho in the 80s and 90s. There has been some discussion about how Dragon Ball, Slam Dunk and Yu Yu Hakusho show were the big three of the 90s, but in terms of simultaneous worldwide popularity and the level of impact that they had all at the same time, I can't say that they were the same as the big three of the mid 2000s, especially since Dragon Ball and Yu Yu Hakusho only became known worldwide during the early 2000s. Now Bleach, Naruto and One Piece on the other hand were dubbed the big three because of their lengthy ongoing nature as well as their widespread popularity, which was credited to the internet which helped these series reach fans all over the globe. In addition, to this, Bleach, Naruto and One Piece were often featured on the covers of Weekly Shonen Jump with an emphasis placed upon the protagonists of these respective series, through having them front and centre which was a testament to their popularity. While Dragon Ball introduced international fans to the world of Shonen, the big three were responsible for increasing the popularity of not only Shonen series, but anime as a whole outside of Japan. They were a trio of shows that had so much momentum, as they had released at the perfect time where Japanese animation was taking off, and anime was becoming a household name across the globe. It was truly a remarkable time, a one that had led to the present acceptance and widespread appeal of Japanese animation outside of Japan. In order to further understand the impact of the big three, let's now talk about my experiences with each of them. I want to break down my experiences because I think it will give an insight into the early years of western anime fandom, and the transition from anime discussions between a handful of people on obscure message boards to dedicated forums with thousands of members like Bleach Asylum or Arlong Park, as well as the early days of posting AMVs on YouTube. I'm fairly confident that my experiences will be pretty similar to most fans who grew up in the West and were around during the golden era of the big three. During the mid 2000s, anime was not as widely accepted as it is today. There was little variety and what we did have was fan subs or poorly localised edited dubs. It was still a period of time where we were riding off of the wave of Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z that had introduced many of us to the world of Japanese animation in the late 90s and early 2000s. Desperate for more, most of us had discovered Naruto like I did back in 2005. At that time, there was literally not much out there to binge on or to watch, especially with the poor internet speeds and lack of knowledge about what anime even was. So seeing a character wearing an orange jumpsuit with spiky hair was very reminiscent to Goku and Dragon Ball, and many of us like myself got hooked onto Naruto immediately. Not too long after this, I discovered Bleach in late 2006 when the anime had started airing its English dub. By this time, I understood that these cartoons that I was watching were called anime. They were more mature than the episodic childish animated shows that we had on UK TV. Anime featured relatable characters, mature themes, and continuing storylines that kept you invested to see the next episode. It was also reminiscent of the hype that I had when I had watched Dragon Ball Z on TV, and each episode had ended with a cliffhanger, and the narrator hyping it up even further. Naruto and Bleach came just at the right time 
time when Dragon Ball Z was no longer being aired on TV. Those two series had filled that void in my life and had introduced me to two unique but very different worlds with a fascinating cast of characters. One Piece was actually the last of the big three that I'd started to watch. I'd given it a chance finally in early 2009. I'd put it off for so long because it was localized for Western fans by none other than four kids who ended up butchering the show and had really made me lose any motivation to even give it a chance. But the hype surrounding it was pretty insane, as many were citing that if you love Naruto and Bleach then you have to watch One Piece. This was another point about why the big three became so widely popular. If you liked one or more of the big three then there is a chance that you're going to like all three of them. This notion had led many like myself to give each of them a chance and to fall in love with them and recognize them as the best of their time. One Piece had really blown up in popularity in 2010, during the time of the Marine Ford arc. The sheer hype surrounding this arc had gotten many people into One Piece, as they'd started buying back issues and eventually skyrocketing the sales of the series. It had ended up eclipsing the sales of Bleach and Naruto, which in my opinion had started to signal the end of the golden era of the big three. The Naruto manga would go on to end in November 2014, while Bleach ended two years later in August of 2016. Now the last surviving pillar of the big three One Piece stands alone as a reminder of the time when three titans had truly dominated in not only sales, but in any discussion that was surrounding anime and manga at the time. As of making this video, I've been into Bleach and Naruto for over 15 years, and One Piece for over 10 years. Whenever I'd watch a few episodes of any one of them, I'd think that this is my favourite out of the three. Each of the big three had made me alternate so much as to which one was my favourite that I never ended up deciding which one was the best. So I just loved all three of them equally, and in my opinion, they are as great as each other. Each of them have their unique attributes that sets them apart from the others, and there really is no other trio of series released exactly at the same time in the same magazine that can compare to the level of worldwide popularity or impact or financial success that the Big Three had. So now that we know about the Big Three, not only objectively but historically as a once in a lifetime phenomenon, let's now try to address the claims that one of the Big Three can be replaced by a new series or discussions surrounding a new iteration of the Big Three. Now it would be unfair to assume that it is just fans who have been wanting a new Big 3, because even Weekly Shonen Jump are trying to cash in on the craze by creating this generation's new Big 3, but it always ends up being forced and unsuccessful. The Big 3 was a solution to a problem that Shonen Jump had after the end of Dragon Ball. When their highest selling manga series ever came to a close, they were looking for the successor of Dragon Ball. Now it is very much a similar situation to how they are looking for the next One Piece right now, with so many new series starting and getting cancelled in no time at all. During the mid 2000s, One Piece, Naruto and Bleach had filled that void for Shonen Jump that was left by the conclusion of Dragon Ball. Combined, the big three were able to rival the popularity and success of Dragon Ball, and most importantly they were able to leave a worldwide impact at the same time thanks to the internet. And this was something of course that wasn't around during the early 90s when Dragon Ball was huge in Japan. So when it comes to the idea of a new big three, it would be in the best interest of Shonen Jump to have this. Why would they limit themselves? to one insanely popular series when they could have three. But like I said, their attempts have failed, and no offence, but ongoing titles like My Hero Academia and Black Clover are always going to struggle to stand alongside One Piece as this new big three. And as far as the discussion surrounding a successor to One Piece is concerned, there is at present no title that is currently serialised within Shonen Jump that can even rival One Piece in terms of worldwide popularity and financial success. Now before all of you start typing Demon Slayer, it undoubtedly did do well, but it only lasted for over 4 years, and despite its financial success, it cannot be referred to as a Big 3 series, since it lacks a key quality of what each of the Big 3 had, which is longevity. Naruto and Bleach ran for 15 years, while One Piece has been ongoing for over 22 years at this point. It is for this reason that they are called the Big 3. Their length on popularity, as well as the fact that they have been serialised at the same time, means that it would be very difficult to recreate this moment moment in time in which they had all achieved this. I'd be the first one to say that I want a new iteration of the big three. I want to be excited again for each issue of Shonen Jump where I can read three series that everyone I know is enjoying and discussing, not only online but in real life too. The mid 2000s was a golden era for Shonen Manga, but as with all golden eras they don't last a lifetime and all good things must come to an end. As much as I want to relive the era of the big three, I highly doubt that we will ever experience anything like that ever again. While yes, it is a good thing that anime is now widely recognised, and there is 
so much more to consume than just shonen titles. This in turn makes it harder for a situation like the big three to exist in this day and age. Back then, we didn't have simulcast anime, and we relied on fan subbers to translate the anime. And series that fall under genres like isekai, slice of life, or harems were not even known or barely they were talked about. In the mid 2000s, most of the anime and manga discussion was focused solely on shonen series, thanks to the impact of Dragon Ball Z. For example, for more than 200 weeks, Dragon Ball was the most searched term on the internet in 2001, and the level of fan sites that had discussed power levels, transformations, and general lore about the series was insane. I remember looking at pictures of Super Saiyan 4 Goku just as Goku had turned into a Super Saiyan on TV. This early version of the internet had Western fans obsessing over shonen titles. We had countless Linkin Park AMVs synced to Dragon Ball Z or Naruto footage. It was the perfect breeding ground for the big three to thrive and grow amongst a group of growing teenagers who were raised on Dragon Ball Z and had wanted more of it. So what better time than for three series that were created by three authors who have cited Dragon Ball as their inspiration for creating manga to hit at the same time. It was not just that Bleach, Naruto and One Piece were selling well. There was so much more to it than just that. Their success was a combination of being at the right place at the right time. And this is why I believe that there cannot be another big three, and why even suggesting this is quite a silly notion. While yes, Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer are excellent, and they are great series in their own right, but I find it disrespectful to assume that they can replace Bleach or Naruto, because if it wasn't for those series, then anime would be nowhere near as popular in the West as it is today, and that's a fact. I hope that this video has been insightful, and it's helped you to understand what the big three is and was, while also debunking notions of there being a new big three, or a new manga series replacing one of the big three series. Now, I'd love to know all of your thoughts on this topic. Did you grow up in the mid-2000s like me and get your Dragon Ball Z fix from the big three? Or did you only recently discover the big three? I'm genuinely looking forward to reading the comments of this video, and I hope you can agree with me that Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece each have their strengths and weaknesses, and that they can be enjoyed just as much as each other. And we don't have to always argue about which one is better than the other, because after all, they are our big three series, with nothing even coming close to rival the success and impact that they had. If you want to know more about the big three, then I recommend you check out James Hansen's video titled Bleach, the History of the Big Three. It does a really good job of breaking down what the big three is and was, and it's a great addition to this video. So definitely check out James's video, I've linked it in the description. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I can't wait to see you in my next one. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with the rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.